good afternoon, Diamond Baptist Church. I uh, want to take time to just uh, uh, tell you that I miss you. Looking forward to Sunday morning service. Uh, we're going to continue to have our services in the parking lot as uh, the speaker system should be in tomorrow. We had to uh, reorder a new one because the other one got lost in the mail, so that should be in. So should be able to hear a little better. Uh, I want you to continue to remember uh, uh, Tab and Jerry and the girls uh, with uh, the loss of a loved one. Just continue to remember, remember them in your prayers. Continue to remember all the other names on the prayer list that are, uh, that are hurting and suffering and been uh, sickness for a long time. Uh, just continue to lift them up. Pray for our nation as we're continuing to battle this uh, COVID-19 coronavirus. Uh, and I just pray that uh, people's eyes would be open to see that they uh, need to turn to, to, to Jesus before uh, it's uh, too late. And I pray that you continue to be a light and uh, shine our light that others may see Christ in us. So uh, we're going to close out Titus tonight. I want to be getting a new Bible study for us to start next week. Uh, hopefully it'll be in. So uh, looking forward to that. But tonight we're just going to look at a few verses. Uh, Titus chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. It says, When I send Artemis to you and Tychicus, uh, be diligent to come to me in Nicopolis, uh, for I've decided to spend the winter there. Send uh, Zenus, the lawyer, and Apollos on their journey with haste, that they may lack nothing. And let our people also learn to maintain good works to meet urgent needs, uh, that they may not be unfruitful. All who are with me greet you. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. So these are the final words to Titus. Uh, it says that he's uh, going to send uh, two, uh, two uh, men there, Artemis and Tychicus. Uh, it says uh, that they send them uh, to uh, Crete. And it says, be diligent to come to me, to Nicopolis. Uh, so he's coming back. And it says, for I decided to spend the winter there. It says, send Zenus, the lawyer, and Apollos on their journey with haste, that they may like nothing. And then I want to focus on, Verse 14, it says, And let our people also learn to maintain good works, uh, to meet urgent needs, that they uh, may not be unfruitful. So that's what we're going to look at tonight. We're going to look at uh, how to maintain good works. It's been, it's been something that's been uh, talked about a lot. Uh, we're saved unto good works. We need to be working uh, uh, to, to show people that we've been uh, born again. We're saved not by works, but unto good works. And it says in chapter 2, verses 14, uh, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people. We're special people now. We've been purified. We've been sanctified. And it says we should be zealous for good works. Uh, so uh, at the end, he's telling them, he says, make sure our people also learn to maintain good works. And that's what we need to be uh, realizing as we've been born again uh, we, we are known by our fruit, uh, by our love, uh, and we're here to meet needs of people that, that, that we can help. Uh, it says to meet urgent needs. If they, uh, a need arises and, and, and you're able to meet it, uh, that's, that's exactly what we should try to do. As a church body, uh, we've had a lot of people that have come by and they needed uh, help with things. And as a church, we try to help them. Uh, if they need food, we we go with them and, and pick them up food. Uh, we, we try to uh, help them in any way that we can. Sometimes people come by and they, they need gas, so we take them to the uh, station beside of us and try to help them with gas. So uh, we try to help out uh, with, uh, with the needs of people that we can. Uh, also, it says that uh, he's telling them that they might not be unfruitful. So we need to be, we need to be fruitful in our walk with Christ. So. Uh, when I was looking at that, I was thinking that uh, we should turn to Galatians chapter 5 and, and look at walking in the Spirit. It says uh, in chapter 5, verse 16, it says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, robberies, uh, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in 
time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So uh, Paul's telling them that the, the, to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because we have to realize that it says that the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And they're contrary to one another. Uh, so we need to be led by the spirit. And when we are, we will uh, produce the fruit of the spirit it says now these are the works of the flesh which are a lot of different kind of sins but it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering uh kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control against such there is no law so it says when we walk in the spirit it says that uh, we will uh, produce the fruit of the spirit which is uh all of these things and when we walk in the spirit we'll uh, be a, a people of love, we'll have joy, we'll have peace, uh, we'll, we'll have long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, we'll have gentleness, self-control. Uh, so that's what Paul's telling Titus, he's telling the church at, uh, in Galatia about these things. Uh, so we, we need to be walking in the Spirit. And one other thing, uh, to, in, in order for us to be able to be a fruitful kind of people, uh, we have to be in the, walking in the Spirit, abiding in the Spirit, allowing, allowing the Spirit to control uh, our lives daily, but also I want to look at one other uh, thing that uh, that we need to realize is in John's gospel, uh, it says that, it's talking about the, the vine and the branches. It says in chapter 15, it says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me it says i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing if anyone does not abide in me he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit so that you will be my disciples. So uh, for us to be a fruitful kind of people, uh, we need to be abiding in the vine. We need to be spirit-filled, spirit-led, and allow Christ to, to guide us and to direct us and the Spirit of God to guide us and to direct us, and, and we will be a fruitful kind of people. We'll be uh, people that are uh, loving. We'll be people that are full of joy and peace and long-suffering. We'll be people that are wanting to meet urgent needs of people we want, we want to do good works. We want to serve the Lord. We want to do these things because we understand where we have come from and how much God loves us. So we want other people to feel the same kind of love that we have. Uh, we want people to, to know what it is like to have joy, to have peace, especially uh, right now as we're going through this difficult time. Uh, it, it's nice to know that even through storms in life, we can have joy and peace. We can have these things because of Christ living in us, the Holy Spirit produces this fruit, and we can and we can have these things, and that's what the world needs right now. They need a relationship with Jesus. They need to have the the peace that uh, that only we can have as a born again believers. So I want you to continue to to realize that we are saved unto good works. We're saved to help people when we can meet need, and we're saved that we may not be unfruitful but fruitful. And Paul uh, finishes, and it says. All who are with me greet you. Greet those who love us in faith, and grace be with you all. Amen. And that's exactly what I, I like how he ends that. He says, grace be with you all. And that's, I'm glad that God's grace is uh, uh, sufficient. I'm glad that God's grace never runs out. It's new every day. It's it's plentiful. There's, uh, there's never going to be a time when he runs out of his grace. And we need to continue to thank God for all that he's done for us. Continue to strive to be uh, a people zealous for good works. In a people that uh, have that can show the world that we've been born again. Uh, thank you again. Uh, I'm looking forward to Sunday morning. I hope all can be there. Uh, if it rains, I'll just be underneath the carport again. Uh, be praying for the service. We're going to be in Hebrews. We're getting close to finishing it out. Then we'll be in the book of Colossians. Uh, again, I'm going to get a new study for Wednesday night so we can uh, have a short Bible study on Wednesday night. Looking forward to whenever we, we can meet back uh, again in the sanctuary and worship together. But until then, we continue to pray, and we'll meet in the parking lot, and on Wednesday night, we'll meet uh, on YouTube. Thank you. Have a good day.